Well, it, it gets exciting uh, every day, more and more exciting, because today I get the privilege of introducing you for our Emmanuel devotional uh, to another friend of ours from overseas. Yesterday we had Janusz, today we have Dave Schnitter from Berlin. Uh, some of you know Dave. Uh, he is going to be bringing the devotional message today, so let's hear it from him. Hi everyone, it's Dave here in Berlin. Uh, it's Friday, which means it's almost weekend, yay! Uh, which may not mean much at the moment because it's Corona and some of us don't even know what day it is. Uh, but I'm glad I get to share with you today. Uh, one of the things that I think is frustrating for all of us at the moment is that so many of our decisions are made for us. You know, obviously these guidelines, they all make sense and we understand it, but it's so hard because we just want to, don't you? We just want to have one day where we can just kind of do whatever we want and we get to decide and we get to go to coffee houses or meet up with our friends and do whatever we want to do and how we would normally do our lives. And a lot of our decisions are made for us these days, which is frustrating. Uh, and at the same time, we realize that those of us, uh, many of us, I think most of us, those of us in leadership and uh, those of us in church leadership, uh, we realize we need to make some huge decisions. And we, it's quite overwhelming. We don't know how to make these decisions because we're, we're sailing in uncharted waters at the moment. Uh, and, and we don't know how to navigate all of this. There is no script. There is no model. There is no map for us. How do we decide what is our next step? Uh, and maybe even in our personal lives, maybe you have to make massive decisions at the moment and you don't know how to make this decision because it's overwhelming. Uh, it's numbing almost, you know. <laughs> maybe you're wondering, should I get married? Should I not get married? Should I marry this person or that person? <laughs> That's a big one. You should figure this one out. <laughs> should, I, should I take this job or should I take this job? Should I go to this school or should I go to this school? Should I stay in Brighton or move to a real city like Berlin? <clears throat> Maybe you should. We, <laughs> we need wisdom in our lives, don't we? Uh, we all need wisdom in our lives, especially now. Um, in the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for wisdom is the word chokma. Chokma. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with chocolate. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could get wisdom just by eating chocolate? <laughs> I would love that. But unfortunately, that's not what's meant by the word chokma. It's the word for wisdom in the Bible. And the Bible actually tells us that the wisest man who ever lived was a man named Solomon. And for a while, he was king over Israel. He was very respected. And in 1 Kings 3, it says the people held that king, Solomon. They held him in awe because they saw that he had wisdom. And fortunately for us, he wrote down his insights, his wisdom, in a book in the Bible, the book of Proverbs. Maybe you're familiar with this book already. And I want to just share two verses from the book of Proverbs that maybe it can be helpful for us today as we need to navigate and make decisions and we need wisdom. Uh, Proverbs 16, verse 8 and 9, it says, It is better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. We can make our plans and the Lord determines our steps. Uh, just that last sentence is actually part of my life story. I, um, God called me into ministry when I was 19 years old. I uh, was actually on a summer mission with some other people in Kosovo. That was just after the war had ended there. And we went to rebuild some of the destroyed homes along with local believers. And I was fascinated to meet these local believers and to hear their stories. And I was also equally fascinated to meet, you know, missionary families who had committed to stay there throughout the war, uh, even though it was dangerous for them. You see, up until that point, I was 19 at the time, my plan for my life was that I wanted to have a career in music. I wanted to go actually study at a music college. That was my plan. And maybe I didn't know that at the time, but I, uh, that plan wasn't just because I had an ambition to be creative. It was also a selfish plan. I had, I had an ambition to be recognized. I wanted to be liked. I wanted fame, I guess. And if I'm honest with myself now, I can say that my plan was all about, I want to have my little kingdom that is all about Dave. And now I was in Kosovo and I met these missionaries and these local believers who were living for something far bigger than themselves, the kingdom of God. And that They didn't just live for it, they were actually willing to die for it. You see, 
I had my plans to go to music college, but the Lord had determined other steps for me. And so I'm glad I followed along because uh, I, I actually didn't end up to go to music college. I ended up go to go study the Bible and prepare for ministry. Uh, and now I get to lead, uh, be part of the leadership team here in Berlin. Uh, and uh, I guess, you know, at the time I had a decision to make. I could have resisted that, that impulse and just, you know, go along my own way and try out music. But I'm so glad I didn't do that because maybe I would have had made some more money, but I would have missed out on so many privileges, uh, kingdom privileges, things I got to see, you know, marriages being restored, prodigal sons and daughters returning home, uh, people finding healing, people finding hope, people finding salvation. Uh, it's been good. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our step. Um, I've learned that the more, the more my kingdom, that which I'm trying to build, actually becomes part of his kingdom. It actually starts to overlap with his kingdom, uh, that what, which God is doing in the world. The more my kingdom and his kingdom become one, uh, the happier I will be. Um, that actually is true. Because if the two are separate, then yeah, maybe I'm making more money and maybe I have fame and maybe uh, I'm comfortable, but I'm missing out on the life that God has created me for. So one of the questions I think we need to ask ourselves is, what am I trying to build with my life? What is it that I'm after? What do I think about the most? What makes me get up out of the bed in the morning? What, what am I most fascinated by? What is that kingdom that I want to build? For me, it was this hunger for, for recognition and that, you know, that, that would drive how I made my decisions. Uh, and to be honest, to this day, I still wrestle with this a little bit. You know, I tend to be a people pleaser and I, I'm, I, I need to be careful. I don't make decisions out of people pleasing. Like I want to be liked by everyone. Therefore, let's just make decisions so everyone is happy. Uh, you know, maybe you can relate to this. But maybe for you, it's something else. Maybe your kingdom is all about money, possessions, you know. If money is what you hold most valuable, then money will drive every decision you make. So... Maybe it could be that you have to make a decision between two jobs um, and one is something that you really love to do, but the other one is something that pays twice as much. If money is your kingdom, then you will go with the second job because that's, what, that's what's most important to you. Um, if, if maybe your kingdom in your life is all about comfort, then you will always, to dis you always decide to do whatever takes the least effort. If the kingdom of your life is all about power, then that will drive any decision you make. You see, you can find out what people value most by looking at their decisions. And the wisdom of their decision making reveals who or what is the kingdom that they are trying to build with their lives. And again, the more my kingdom, what I'm trying to build with my life, is actually a part of his kingdom no longer about the things I'm trying to accomplish, but it's his kingdom, the happier I will be. That's what is meant when the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. So you need to ask, and maybe, maybe you're asking right now, it's like, okay, how, how do I know then what, what God wants to do in his kingdom? How can I discover this plan? Well, I've noticed God's plan for my life, for our lives, is it's not like he gives us a, a map uh, where we get to see the entire big picture uh, with uh, the, this is everything God wants to do in my life. Because I think if God were to show us everything that he intends to do in my life, in your life, it would scare us to death and we wouldn't move because it's so terrifying. But, but I think the way God does it is more like a scroll, not a map, but a scroll that he uh, unrolls a little bit at a time and we just we just say okay here, here's the next step that I want you to take and, and we say okay I can do that step here's what I want God what God here's what you want me to do today I can I can do this uh, I don't know the entire plan but I trust that the plan is good I trust that it you know I, God leads us on this journey following Jesus is is you know, this step-by-step -step journey. Uh, we know that the destination is him. He will be our reward. But the way there is adventurous, and we don't always know the next step. God determines the steps of those who are obedient to him. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. 
And you know, sometimes, you know, the way we go about this is we say, God, okay, show me the step that you have planned for my life, and then I'll think about it, and then maybe I will do it. But guys, that's not, that's not obedience. That's just agreement. Well, you, you, I'm agreeing with God, therefore I'm doing it. Obedience is, God, I say yes to your plan, even if it doesn't make sense, or even if it's uncomfortable, or even if I'd rather do something else because I had something else in mind. Actually, real obedience is saying yes to God before he even showed you the next step. You put your yes on the table and you say, God, whatever it is that you want me to do, my posture, my heart is yes. Your plans are far better, far better than my plans. And, and so I'm going to say yes to whatever it is that you have for me. The most dangerous prayer you can pray today on this Friday is just three words. Lord, yes, amen. <laughs> Those are, that's the most dangerous prayer you can pray. But it's also the most adventurous prayer. God's blessing, God's favor rides on our obedience. So as we go into this weekend, maybe there's some big decisions to make. Let's make sure we ask the right questions. What is it that God, God's kingdom, what is it that he's trying to accomplish in this world? And let's say yes to his plans. Let's seek these plans. Let's try to discern this. And he wants to reveal this one step at a time. We don't know the big picture yet, but one step at a time he wants to show us our next steps. And so let's, let's have a posture of saying yes, because I think God loves to reveal his plans to people who have this posture of yes. God bless you, everyone.